Welcome to part one of a two-part introduction to Scalar's dashboard. My name is Katie Heil. I'm the Digital Curation Librarian at the College of Worcester. Together, these two videos will give you a brief overview of the dashboard, which is the back end or the administrative side of your Scalar site. The dashboard is where you can globally manage your site and its content. It's also where you house most of the stuff that makes up your Scalar book, that is media, pages, annotations, etc. If your dashboard looks a bit different than this when you sign in, it may be because you're looking at an older version of Scalar's dashboard. This video will cover the newest version as of October 2020. You can flip back and forth between versions of the dashboard by clicking here on Revert Dashboard and here on Try It Out. When you sign into Scalar for the first time, you'll see a page that looks something like this. This left-hand side is where you can update the settings for your Scalar account and change your password. On the right side of the page, you'll see an option to create a new book. This is your first step. You can create as many books as you'd like and manage them all from your dashboard. They will appear in this list as you create them. Let's go ahead and create a new book. We'll give it a title and a subtitle. You'll notice an option for three different genres. These options do not change the way Scalar functions. Scalar simply wants to know how it should refer to the item that you're creating in the editing interface. Select the kind of item you'd like to create. Book is the most common. Now that I've created my book, I can go into the dashboard to build and edit that book by clicking the link that appears just to the right of the roll column when you hover over that space. At any time, you can click Return to Book near the upper right of the page to take a look at the front end of your book as it develops based on the changes you make in the dashboard. Now to get back to the dashboard from your book, simply click the wrench in the upper right hand corner. Now let's take a look at these tabs. The Properties tab is where you'll make broad changes to your book. You'll notice that you can edit the title, add a description, and even customize the end of the URL for your book. Here is where you can adjust permissions for your book. Scalar works default to private, requiring any viewers to log in before they can view the book. You can make your book public by selecting this first option. You can further increase the visibility of your book if you choose one or both of these options. This last option has to do with an editorial workflow, which is a feature of Scalar that we won't be discussing, as it's really targeted toward formal publishers and presses, so I wouldn't worry about that right now. All of these comments settings are only relevant if you enable Hypothesis, which just extends the normal functionality of Scalar and is fully optional. Hypothesis is a collaborative editing tool. You might be interested in this if you're imagining a pedagogical project and you want the class to be able to comment on one another's work in the book. Feel free to follow up with your librarian or technologist after the workshop if you're interested in Hypothesis. Similarly, the plugin section here is asking you if you want to enable another extension of Scalar. It's not at all necessary for the average Scalar use case, so don't worry about that right now either. Just go ahead and leave that unchecked. We'll come back to the table of contents later. You'll notice that if you click on this add item, it prompts you to select which pages you'd like to include in the table of contents. We first need to create those pages and then we can arrange them. That might be a little counterintuitive, but I think it makes more sense when we get to talk about the structure of Scalar. If your book is published, you can include the publisher information, including a logo here. Otherwise, feel free to leave this as is. Remember to always save your work. Now that we've adjusted our properties, let's move on to the Editorial tab. As I mentioned before, we'll skip the Editorial workflow. It was developed specifically for formal publishers, and while it's possible to use it in teaching, it would require some creative adaptation. If you're resolutely interested in this, though, this is something else your librarian can help with, so do feel free to ask. Now we're on the Style tab. You don't have to do anything at all in this tab, and honestly, I rarely do. 
None of this is required for a fabulous looking scalar book. These options are in here in case you're a graphic designer or you'd like to code and you want to make customizations beyond the basics. The customizations you make here will apply across the entire book. For example, this thumbnail option will give you the option of selecting an image from your computer to appear next to your book's title. If you had a custom designed logo or something, you might want to include that here. Similarly, if you select a background image, it will apply to the background of your entire book. You can use CSS or JavaScript if you know those coding languages and you want to really customize the background of your book. In the next video, we'll talk about the very important content tab and also briefly discuss managing users and the utilities tab.